Hey guys, it's a Friday morning in Kiev, Ukraine, and I'm trying to keep my tradition to get the morning coffee <laughs> and choose a cute topic to paint with watercolors. So recently I had um, a lot of pictures of super cute uh, flying squirrels shown to me on Instagram. So I think it's a sign and I need to paint a flying squirrel today. So let's do it. All right, so I think to achieve this feeling of fluffiness of my little squirrel over here, I will use wet on wet technique. But um, yeah, before I start, yeah, before I start, I will mix my gray color first because mostly the squirrel is gray and I'll go for indentrend blue mixed with a bit of uh, orange to achieve gray tone. Uh, we know that orange is complementary to blue, so mixed in right proportions, we can get nice um, grayish tone. And also in uh, Rosa watercolor set, I have a color which is literally gray. I'm gonna use it probably as well. And maybe sometimes here and there, I'll revive my squirrel with some burnt sienna. So that's the plan. <laughs> I've got my colors premixed. Since I'm not working on cotton paper, the um, water is not going to stay. Well, the paper is not going to absorb it and keep it in its layers like it happens with cotton. Uh, that's why. I don't have this time to wait for this process to happen when water is soaking into the paper layers uh, before you know you apply your first layer. Uh, you kind of need to act fast because <laughs> it dries fast and uh, well you'll see. <laughs> Yay, some magic. So I just drop the most important color spots, the darkest ones, the color, most colorful ones. The area around the eyes is actually white, so it would be nice to And the area around the nose is more um, in bluish tones. This area should be preserved as well. And I'll soften the edge. Okay, more or less, first layers are down on the face. <laughs> there is also a body here. I think the belly of our flying squirrel will be uh, with ceruleum, very nice and soft um, blue tone. Okay, 
For now everything looks like a big mess but hopefully soon enough there will be more clear <laughs> um, shapes regret that I forgot to preserve this area that should be white and now the paint leaked into it so I'm gonna have to deal with it later somehow so yeah this paper it dries really fast first uh, it creates the puddle on its surface then it just dries out and creates a sharp outline that's precisely why i decided to go with um, wet on wet technique in the beginning so that my color transitions are softer than uh, what they would have been if i worked with wet on dry approach Little tiny cute feet. This feet looks like a, like bunny feet. <gasps> I even want to add some pink into it just because it's so cute. I think there's another foot hiding somewhere behind the trunk, but it's not very clear. Okay, so now I can clarify the nose. I think the face is relatively dry already. And a tiny drop of pink. Actually, I'm using coral color. And I'm gonna make our squirrel smile. But later. For now, I need to wait a little.
some darker down on the head. Now the thing with the second ear, it's supposed to help me outline the head of a squirrel, the shape of the head. So here will be in my eye, not my eye, the squirrel eye, anyway. <laughs> then there will be this um, second arm, the left arm. And a little bit of fluff on the face. Here we go, I'm going around the cheeks. And here comes my burn sienna that I'm gonna mix with blue to make it darker. And I'll work on the hands. Those squirrels, they always eat something or hold food in their arms. Here we go. And a second hand. Now is an important opportunity to correct the shape of the face. So I'm painting around the cheeks and at the same time outlining them using negative space technique here. And this allows me to actually visually create the face. Voila. Okay, I think uh, it's time for coffee now. Now with the semi-wet brush, I want to work through the fluffiness. I'll dilute the edge. To make my watercolor stroke less uh, defined, less sharp. And at the same time, it will create this feeling of fluffy cheek. All right.
I'm gonna quickly work through the toes and define the feet. And also soften the edges here in the bottom. And now I think it's time to work on the eyes. I'm starting from the light part, the reflection. It's a bit scary because if I mess it up, it's going to be the end of the squirrel. <laughs> I'm going to have to start over again. The curious part about this um, squirrel is that the, the eyes are black and there's also this um, black area around the eyes like panda <laughs> and because of this um, circle around the eyes uh, it kind of gives this illusion that the eyes of the squirrel are massive like super big compared to you know the face <laughs> the rest of the body but actually it's not. The eyes are fine. It's just this uh, black Oreo around it creates this feeling of uh, oversized <laughs> eyes. <laughs> but I find it absolutely cute. All right, one eye is successfully done. Mm -hmm. Well, seems to be another successful eye, <laughs> so I guess uh, I'm going to finish this painting today without having to start over. Whew, okay, relief. <laughs> Now it's just a few details. So I need to do something with the mouth. Dark red.
and the squirrel is smiling. Nice. So, what should I do next? I think the nose needs to be darker. Then, of course, there's the tree. I'm using brown Van Dyke color. My paper is hot press, so there's no texture whatsoever. That's why when I'm doing this uh, stroke with the brush belly down, it doesn't really uh, give me any sort of like scratch. Um, because there is no grain or, or tooth <laughs> on the paper to actually um, like catch the pigment from my brush. So I didn't get the, the effect I was looking for, but it's okay. The tree is definitely not the most important thing in this painting. All right, and I will probably add a part here to kind of connect the hands of the squirrel to the tree. Otherwise, it looks like it's um, there's a lot of weird empty space. <laughs> Everything needs to be logical and connected. Here can be another missing foot. Hiding behind. And well, we're almost done. There's a tail and the back. To make it fluffy, at first I put some clean water. And then the paint. I think I need to correct the shape of the head <laughs> over here. And 
and uh, I added a little bit of a blue tone just to connect the whole painting in terms of um, color scheme and that's it I think we've got here a nice and cute little flying squirrel <laughs> oh no the whiskers we're missing the whiskers but to do them we need to wait for squirrel to get dry and then add the whiskers and with the super thin rigor brush I will add the whiskers or not. A little bit of texture on the tree. And here we go. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you decided to paint with me, do share your artworks and I will be super excited to see your little squirrel. See you next Friday.